Hello Beginner Dragons, this is Mr. Van and today is going to be the beginning of, no, the end of the fourth week, which means today is going to be pre-test because on Monday it's going to be strike test and on Thursday it will be graduation. Well, the videos for strike test and graduation. I think if you guys go to physical classes, then it's going to be Monday and Tuesday is strike test, then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is going to be graduation. But that's only if you guys are going physically. If you're not, then on Monday, there is going to be a video for strike test, which you guys have to do. And then uh, a video on Thursday released for graduation. With that being said, um, today is going to be pre-test. So we are going to be reviewing uh, the past month and um, do going over some details that I might've told you and um, really trying to make our form and our NOI trouble the best that it can be. So that's what we are doing. Uh, I might talk about a few things from past months that I haven't talked about ever since then, but it's mainly going to be what we've covered this month. Um, with that, um, let's talk about our physical and mental goal, which is focus and black belt excellence. So first, focus. So um, I've talked about focus a lot over the past month, so um, this should be just really quick review because I want more detail on the form and on the idle eye trouble in case you guys are struggling with that stuff. So first, focus. Um, what is focus? Focus is being able to pay attention to whatever task is needed at the moment. So um, to concentrate on uh, something, you can use a lot of different skills. One skill that you guys can use really easily is imagining things. So um, I've used this example a lot, but if you guys are reading a book, you can imagine yourself in that story. So if you guys are reading something like, I don't know if you guys read this anymore, but uh, Magic Treehouse. I used to read Magic Treehouse all the time when I was younger. And um, I always imagined myself with the two main characters going throughout history and having adventures. So I always imagined that and that's how I understood and focused on the story rather than TV or um, going outside and doing stuff. That's how I pictured uh, my adventures was through that book. And you guys can do the same thing. I don't know what books you guys are reading, but you guys can imagine yourself looking and spectating through how um, you know, the main characters are going on this adventure. And you guys can imagine this stuff and that's how you concentrate on that. Now, with that being said, focus can be hard sometimes. Like I said, there's TV, there's um, the outside world, there's uh, your math homework, there's computers, there's your iPad, your iPhone, uh, iPhones, um, your tablets. There's a lot of this stuff. But to focus, it would be way easier to focus on just one thing than uh, a lot of things. So focusing on a lot of things and concentrating on everything at once would be considered multitasking. But um, some people have trouble multitasking on five different things at once. Sure, you could be amazing at multitasking and doing your math homework while reading a book, while watching TV, while listening to music and doing all that stuff at once. But not everyone's good at that. If me personally, if I'm listening to music and I'm trying to do uh, my math homework, Sometimes I'll add another four when I'm not supposed to be adding four or I'll make a silly math, math mistake like uh, subtract something instead of adding something. So that messes with me. So instead, I turn off my music and I focus and concentrate on only my math homework. So then after I finish all that, then I can listen to my music or then I can watch my TV show or then I can do whatever I need to do. But at that moment, I should only be focused on my math homework. So I turn off everything else and I only concentrate on my math homework. And that's what focus is. Focus is basically being able to concentrate on one thing at one time. So that could be your math homework. That could be the music you're listening to. That could be your reading. It could be a lot of things, but those are just a couple examples. So that is focus in a nutshell. Now we're going to talk about black belt excellence. So what is black belt excellence? Black belt excellence is being able to have the attitude, the physical aspect, and the mental aspect of being a black belt. So 
Um, obviously, you guys know the physical part. Physical being like punching, kicking, uh, spin kicks, jump kicks, um, stuff like that. So you guys should be able to do a uh, twist and punch. You guys should be able to do a jab. You guys could be able to do a pizza kick. You guys can be able to do all that sort of stuff. But there's also another side of being a black belt, which is the attitude and the mentality part. So attitude is obviously how you present yourself and uh, your mindset is your mentality. That's how you do all this stuff is with your mind. So um, when we do that, uh, we want to have these sort of uh, goals in your head. So stuff like self-discipline, like respect, like um, honesty, like integrity, like uh, perseverance, all that sort of stuff. Now, you might be thinking those are just a lot of big words, but to get your black belt, you have to understand those words and you have to bring that into your uh, life, not just in karate, but in every aspect. So at home, you should be able to have self-discipline and be able to do your chores without being told, hey, go do your chores. You guys should be able to do that. Now, there's also respect. You guys shouldn't be yelling at your parents like, I want to do this and you can't tell me otherwise. That's respect. That is a lack of disrespect. I mean, a lack of respect in that situation. If you guys are yelling at your parents, that is disrespectful. But if you guys are listening to your parents, you're paying attention, you guys are following instructions, that's respect. Um, what else did I say? I said integrity. So if you guys are being... Um, a person of integrity, you guys are um, being able to, uh, uh, how do I explain this? You guys are being able to keep something in mind. You guys are being able to be honest, which is also something I said. You guys are being honest. You guys are making sure that everything is right. You guys are making sure that uh, no rules are being broken or something like that and if you, something is breaking the rules you guys are telling whoever is in charge and you're making sure that even if it's you you're getting in trouble or the person's getting in trouble for whatever they did so if i'm in preschool and i'm playing with my toys and then i snap one i should have the integrity to go up to the teacher and say hey i broke this toy is there something i can do and Nine times out of 10, there's nothing you can do and they'll probably let you off the hook. But sometimes they'll make you sit out for like 10 minutes, but maybe that 10 minutes would have been 30 minutes if you hid the broken toy. So most of the time you guys are gonna get off a lot easier if you guys have integrity and you make sure that um, it's right, you do the right thing. Uh, like I just said, honesty, making sure that you're telling the truth. Um, perseverance. Uh, we talked about this before. It's not giving up, making sure that um, even when times are hard, even when things are getting rough, like if you think you're going to fail a test, if you feel like you don't have enough time for a test, if you guys don't feel like uh, you have enough time to do your homework, all that sort of stuff, even if it's hard, you guys keep on going and you try your best. And even if you guys fail, that's okay because you tried your best. And that is just a few examples of how your mind is also part of being a black belt. That's how you um, figure stuff out as a black belt as well. Um, when you guys are still learning these physical types stuff, you guys are also learning this mentality that black belts have that, oh, I have to do what's right because it's right, not because I'm being told to, that sort of stuff. Now, I just used a lot of words, I talked a lot, and honestly, I don't think this video has a lot of time uh, to do a warm up, so I'm probably gonna skip the warm up. But you guys can pause the video here and go outside because it's really nice out. Actually, it was it's been really nice out all week actually. Um, so if you guys have um, some sort of warm up planned, like uh, running outside, playing with the dog, or um, playing basketball or kicking around a soccer ball or playing catch with your dad or something like that um, You guys can do that. But if not you guys can do push-ups sit-ups, whatever you want to do uh, To warm up and get your blood pumping. Um, I know uh, Yesterday for a sort of warm-up sort of thing. 
Uh, me and my friends went to the tennis court and we played tennis. So if you guys want to do something like that, you guys can go out with your friends, do some sort of physical activity, and then after that, you guys can um, tune back in after that. And after you're feeling um, like you've exercised today, you can watch this video and finish it and have sort of um, a learning part of this where you guys learn some details about your form and your idle line shoulder. So if you guys are gonna do a warm up outside, go ahead. If you guys are gonna do a warm up inside, go ahead. Make sure you pause the video so that when you come back, you guys are right here and you guys are ready to do your form and your idle line shoulder. I'm sorry if you guys are hearing any cars outside. Um, they've been really loud lately. Um, so um, I'm sorry if you guys are hearing that. There's just a lot of traffic, I guess. Um, I guess today's a busy day for everyone. So the street is getting a little busy. So anyways, I apologize for that. And now we're gonna move on to our form and our idle line troll. So for our form, we're going to do Dragon Form 1. Uh, I'm just gonna really quickly do it. I'm not really gonna go into details, but after work, um, I'm gonna do a couple moves that I feel like you guys might be struggling with. So yeah, we're gonna get into that. So feet together, you put one finger up, say Dragon Form 1. Sir, you get into your guard stance. Make sure that you have that toe heel line. All right, now we do back fist, twist and punch, turn the foot, front kick. We do a side break pull. I'm gonna do it to the side so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And if you guys are missing some stuff, you guys can uh, watch this and see what I'm doing exactly. So tuck my chin, hug my head, butt, side, slap, two side kicks, one, two, and then we're gonna take a knee. So take a knee like that, two cat's paws, cat's paw, cat's paw, guard stance, touch down, twist and punch, front punch, and chop. Just like that. So now that we've done that, um, I'm gonna give you a couple details that you might be missing. First thing, like I said, making sure that you have that toe heel line. So when I'm lining up with my target, I wanna make sure that my toe and my heel are in line with it. There's a couple reasons. Number one, it kind of gives me a side profile so that um, if someone's trying to hit me in the groin, they won't be able to because they're just gonna hit my hip instead. And my hip would hurt a lot less than if they hit my groin. So making sure that I have that side profile. Now, number two, that also gives me a lineup for whatever move that I need. Plus it gives me a lot of transitioning uh, stances and all that ability to move. So if I didn't have that toe heel line and I was moved like this, then I would have to move a lot more to get into a forward bow or a front stance or um, all, all, all that sort of stuff. So now that we have that, making sure that we have that toe heel line, we're gonna go into the second detail, which is going to be the punch. When you do a punch, make sure that it's a vertical punch, which means up and down. So my knuckles are all up and down. We're doing that because there's a lot of places that the punch would fit into that would hurt a lot if you got hit there. So one prime example would be the throat. If I got hit in the throat, it would hurt a lot and it would be hard for me to breathe. Another example of where it would hurt is my solar plexus, which is where the two ribs run up and meet. So if someone hits me there, they're gonna knock the wind out of me, which makes it hard for me to breathe, which makes it so that they can run away really, really fast. So you wanna be able to hit either the throat or the solar plexus so it's hard for them to breathe, making it hard for them to chase you if you need to run away. Now, with that, um, now we're gonna move on to another detail, which is for the front kick. When you guys do a front kick, make sure that you turn your foot and bring it to a 45 degree angle because if you guys don't, you might break your leg, which isn't good. So make sure that it's pointed 45 degrees so that you guys have balance. And when you kick, you're gonna have more um, power going into it because you can push off the ground with your other leg. So 45 degrees, kick, making sure that you can get that balance from that 45 degree angle and you can push off the ground with that back leg. Um, I already talked about the side break fall. Cast pause, 
Cat's paws, that's what it was next. Cat's paws, when you guys do a cat's paw, make sure that you guys are hitting with this part right here. That is called your palm, which is the kind of bottom of your um, hand. Because when you guys do that, you're hitting with a hard spot, which is going to hurt them a lot. So if you're hitting them in the chest, that would hurt. If you're hitting them in the nose, that would hurt. If you're hitting them uh, anywhere that's soft, that would hurt them a lot more than it would hurt you. So make sure that you're hitting with that kind of bottom area. Now, uh, I already talked about those punches again. Now, the chunk, same sort of area, but now it's to the side. So making sure that you're hitting with that bone area because you're really aiming for the neck right here, right under the ear. That's because there's a lot of nerves there, which makes that area really sensitive. So if you guys hit there, it's going to hurt really, really bad for them, making it easy for you guys to run away. So hitting that spot would be really amazing. So um, like I said, you want to be able to picture your uh, opponent right in front of you, your target right in front of you, so that they're the same height as you, so that when you guys are practicing this, you guys can practice seeing someone right in front of you and saying, oh, that's their neck, or oh, that's their chest, or oh, that's their solar plexus, and all that sort of stuff. So that is um, what we talked about uh, for our form. Now we're gonna really quickly review our um, idle eye trouble. A lot of the details are the same, but uh, there's one or two details that I wanna make sure that you guys know. So first, put your hands up, say, I don't want trouble. We get into our guard stance like so. We do an up on punch, making sure that our punch is vertical. And now I'm gonna say the detail, which is making sure that we're not blocking with the inside of our arm. Because like I said, with the ear and underneath the ear, there, that area is really sensitive because there's a lot of nerves. So if someone hits you really, really hard, A, it's gonna hurt your arm really bad, and B, because your arm gets really, really hurt, you're gonna flinch a little bit, bringing your arm down, which makes it really easy for them to hit you right in the head. So make sure that you're not blocking with that inside area, and then after that, we do the kick. Same detail as I said before, making sure that it's pointed 45 degrees and that it's a vertical kick, which is why it's called a front kick, because it's forward and it's up and down. Um, making sure that you're hitting with the ball of your foot, which is this area right here. So um, that is um, details for the first half. So we're going to do that one more time. Now we're going to do the second part, which is the up block chop and front kick. Now those details are kind of the same as the, black, the last detail and the details that I gave you for, for the form, making sure that you're pointing 45 degrees with your kick. And when you chop, you're hitting with the bone. But also for the chop uh, block that's open-handed, so that means that your hand is open like so. Same thing, making sure that you're not hitting with the nerves or else it's gonna hurt really bad, making you flinch and hit you in the head. But also making sure that you're not blocking with your fingers. Because if you do block with your fingers, then you're going to break your fingers and again, you're going to flinch and they're going to hit you in the head. So now you're going to have a broken hand and you just got hit in the head, which isn't good. So um, those are some details that you might want to run over um, so that you guys understand what's going on before strength test on Monday and graduation on Thursday. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.